Welcome to Environmental Controls 1. In this course, we're going to look at the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems in small buildings. This course is designed to both prepare you to do the technical drawings for the, the day in and day out requirements of the mechanical systems in buildings. And then it's going to also have a specific focus on the concepts of environmentalism. When we talk about environmental controls, we're really talking about the heating and cooling systems for human comfort. But to extend that, in this course, we're looking at our impact of what we build on the environment. So we'll spend a lot of time looking at passive design strategies, active design strategies, reducing the energy consumption of our buildings, with an eye towards improving um, the issues that are in front of us today, which are global climate change. A little bit about myself. Um, as an instructor, I'm coming to teaching relatively recently. Uh, this is my fourth year at it. I have a site that describes my background. I've been a consultant, and in recent years, I've been a consultant for building products manufacturers who make high-end rain, rain screen cladding systems, uh, facades for buildings. You'll find out a little bit more about that in the course. The text requirements are um, two books. The Mechanical Electrical Equipment for Buildings is the one that I'll use reference for in creating lecture materials. Um, it's a large book, um, a tomb, so to speak, with uh, more content than you'll probably ever be able to gather in. Don't be intimidated by it. It's a great desk reference going forward. And the other book, um, Green Building Illustrated, is a wonderfully illustrated building, uh, excuse me, book that will inspire a lot of, inter, um, a lot of uh, opportunities for design improvements in your work. So these two uh, will work for this course. They're going to also be a requirement for environmental controls too, and they'll be great desk companions when you're going forward doing studio work. In typical fashion, this is an, um, an in-person um, course but it's also an online course. So I wanna describe the um, uh, in-class course because that drives the way the format of the course is primarily um, laid out. So we, we have a typical function of a Tuesday lecture and a Thursday lecture. Um, I have split it into a lecture on Tuesday now and active learning with lab work on Thursdays. For the online section, you'll do both at this, um, asynchronously um, so you can review lectures and then move into the um, lab portion of that as you see your time schedule laid out. This is the um, template that I follow for instruction. These are all the requirements laid out um, by the syllabus, by the course description, and um, the basis for um, our references to accreditation. Uh, I bring up, um, especially because we've, we've moved to an online format for a lot of our instruction last semester, um, Blackboard Collaborate is a wonderful way for us, uh, especially if you're online, for us to have face-to-face -face contact and discussion. I invite you to use it or encourage any communication between myself and, and yourself um, can happen with Collaborate. And I'll set up sessions for that specifically. Um, this course runs over the typical semester. It was laid out over that. Um, if it's an online version, we have a lot to compress. So our topics um, from a broad brush are the human environment. Uh, environmental controls is all about human comfort in our built form. We will look at um, natural and mechanical systems. We put a focus on natural systems in this course because we want to start driving um, you are thinking towards uh, preservation of, of the environment. And so we look at reducing energy consumption. We look at water supply and drainage systems. It's a basic requirement for architects to know and understand and how to work with it. And we'll find opportunities in, in enhancing design through water management on the exterior building. So every, every one of these subjects, no matter how um, dry it may seem, opens up opportunities for innovative design. Um, and so the next one, daylighting and artificial lighting. Daylighting is a huge focus of architectural uh, delight in the way we uh, produce our buildings. And we'll start to look at how to make that meaningful and quantifiable. Um, electrical systems, uh, once again, this is heavily code related. And once we have the basic understandings of this, you'll feel very comfortable in starting initial uh, electrical layouts in your, in your projects. And acoustics is another place where there are plenty of places to innovate and create fun and um, exciting interiors um, to manage sound. 
So I've laid this course out um, to have a, a lecture component and then a lab component. And the lab component is really uh, more intensive in many ways. We have 15 labs, or excuse me, um, looks like 3, 12, 13 labs. And they, um, they cover a gamut of the lighting, the plumbing. I've tried to align them as close as possible to the lecture subject matter. Um, but when you're done, you'll have these 13 pages, um, hopefully beautifully crafted and a reference for you as you go through your studio work and uh, possibly additions to your portfolios and or any discussions you may have with future employers. One of the things I'm trying to do um, uh, in my courses now is to, once you've completed your lab project, is to add this narrative. This is an example by a, a, a student last year. It describes the project, what the outcomes were, uh, but it's really a narrative from the student's perspective, from your perspective, about what you felt about the project. I grade you on this. I give you an extra point, in a, uh, which is significant. And it's a great opportunity for you to um, add language to your modeling and, and visual learning. Let's quickly step through all of the, uh, the projects. We're going to do this in rapid fire succession. I would uh, just encourage you to, to kind of like um, listen from a, a broader perspective, not on any specific details, um, just so that you have a full um, uh, um, overall gestalt view of what the course will be like. So we're going to start out with daylighting analysis. We'll make a quick mock-up building. We'll modify some windows, and then we'll do some um, illumination renderings to make sure that we have enough light available to do task. We'll make up a small mock-up building that's insulated and has a window on it, and we'll do energy calculations. And then we will add a um, uh, change out the windows and look at energy performance. So we'll do a little of uh, A-B comparison look at payback periods, the cost effectiveness of improving window systems. And this idea of analyzing is a big component of what we are going to do in this course. We'll uh, jump back to our larger building again and put in an HVAC system. This is where we take advantage of the BIM modeler. We'll add a few pieces of steel to support a rooftop unit. We'll run some duct work in. Um, mostly to prepare for you to be able to do this in studio work and have a feeling for the complexities of this system. These graphics, are, uh, this project looks much more intimidating than it really is in practice. We, a uh, very important thing for um, preparation for comprehensive studio is the understanding of what a code rated ADA, American Disabilities Act restroom is. So we'll go through and we'll completely detail that out. It'll be very useful for you going forward with your projects and we'll get a, a, a handle on how to do that in a BIM environment. And then you'll have this drawing going forward for use in other uh, bathroom um, installations you're going to need to do. We'll then uh, go on the back side of that bathroom and add our plumbing and supply lines to it. You'll get a good feeling for how these systems are routed, what they look like, so you'll be able to recognize them on site. Um, and you'll also be able to draw uh, construction details for them. Then we'll take an assessment, which will be a comprehensive look at what we've talked to in our lectures that mirrors what we've done in our labs. These are really um, only a, a small portion of the grading, um, but they're really just a check to make sure that you've been gathering in the lecture material. So after we made that ADA bathroom, we're going to extend it out to a little lunchroom area, and that affords us the chance to put in electrical outlets to create a little utility closet that needs specific dimensions to it. Um, also, you can get a handle on the be beginnings and basics of doing electrical layout diagrams like this. With our visitor center, we're going to use a tool inside of Revit to do that energy analysis. And then we're going to um, construct it one way and then enhance its performance to see how we can improve it. We're going to move inside of that building and do some interventions with acoustical components to enhance the interior acoustical properties. We'll build a specific wall. We'll learn how to detail that and communicate it. We'll move back to the outside of the building and we'll put photovoltaic panels on the roof and we'll change their configuration to find out how we can optimize their performance. We'll take a break from that building and we have to do um, a requirement of this course and that's to look at, um, is to introduce you to vertical transportation systems. So we'll learn how to do um, a stairwell, an elevator, and an escalator system model it, understand what we can pull off of that model. Like I said, the BIM modeler is a 
super assistive in helping us to craft these details. So it looks like a lot of work is done here, but it's a relatively um, quick lab. Um, we're going to go back to our building then and put it on a site. We're getting kind of close to the finishing up of the course. And in the interventions here, we'll do plantings to control wind. We'll orient the building for sun. We'll do uh, detention ponds to collect rainwater that comes off of parking lots and roof systems. So we'll, we'll bring the idea of integrating the building into the site together um, through some of the new interventions that we've learned. We always do a, uh, we always try to do a field trip to a net zero house that's on the Wellsville campus. Um, obviously online that's impractical. Um, I mention it for those online because that's kind of disrupts the workflow and that's a rationale behind why M6 goes from M6 to M6A. Um, and you'll see that. Um, and we finish up with the green roof. Um, so we looked uh, in lecture at the green roof construction and we'll go in um, and do the same construction on our uh, visitor center that we create. And that'll give you an opportunity to think about structure, the buildup of these systems, and how that has a visual effect and look um, from grade level and um, from the top side. Um, I have a little video here that I'll play at the end. I guess we'll almost call this the end now. I just wanted to show you there is one final assessment that happens after that of the second half series of um, lectures that we've done. Once again, not a significant part of your grade, just to make sure that you've covered watching the lectures. So I'll finish this video off by playing, or excuse me, the main video by playing the smaller video. It kind of goes to the idea of the powerful tool that we have with Revit specifically, but BIM modelers in general today with analyzing the consumption of energy, the mechanical utilities that go into our building. So in many ways, we have really powerful tools that should um, really make our work more interesting, fun, and um, less labor intensive. So I'll finish this off with this video. Discover Revit Systems Analysis. Integrated analysis and modeling, better design and performance. Use architectural models at any level of detail and completeness to quickly create accurate, analytical geometry. This is especially valuable for enabling systems analysis from the earliest stages of design, staying in sync with architectural development. This is the same analytical model used by Autodesk Insight, which now includes extended climate data, envelope material thermal, and building space type data. Capture HVAC system design intent with a simple sketch tool, attaching smart system objects from an extensive range of types to define which systems serve what regions of the building. This forms the basis for analysis, as well as downstream coordination, documentation, and detailing. Use Revit views and schedules to validate the model before analysis and explore model outputs in graphical and tabular form. Powered by Energy Plus and built using the OpenStudio programming interface, Revit Systems Analysis ensures high trust and confidence and provides total transparency into how analysis is run and critically, the ability to create custom workflows. This opens the door to much greater analytical physical workflow automation and whole building and system design optimization Discover Revit Systems Analysis. Integrated analysis and modeling, better design and performance.